Lovely, thank you. Okay, Novak, um, back in action, um, your first tournament since Wimbledon. Have you had a chance to reflect on that and, and, and analyze um, that event and how you kind of re-energize for this tournament? Well, I've, I've had a, um, a week more than, than I had in the past six, seven years of a, of a Grand Slam uh, Grand Slam career. It hasn't happened for a long time that I haven't played in the second week. So um, from one way or another, it happened for a reason. And uh, I had more time to, to reflect on, on the season and, and, of course, the, the French Open. Uh, that, that was very emotional. It took a lot out of me. And, um, I got to spend more time with the family. I got to do more things off the tennis that, uh, that fulfills me, keeps me going. And so, uh, you know, uh, it's only half season over and now, now it's, it's a new beginning. For you personally, the Rogers Cup, it's, it's been a successful tournament in the, in the past. Um, what is it about this event that, that you enjoy and, and, and playing in front of passionate Canadian fans? Yeah, Canada has a strong history in sports and tennis, particularly uh, through the Rogers Cup. So I've had. Um, that privilege of, of winning this tournament a couple of times and back in 2007 in, in Montreal was one of the biggest wins I had um, in my career and it was one of the springboards I think for uh, what was coming up after that in my career so um, those memories come back to me whenever I, I you know, come to the Canadian soil and uh, you can feel the appreciation of, of uh, uh, and passion of people in Canada for sport for tennis so it's always, you know, obviously a pleasure to perform in front of them. And for you personally, the, the Masters Series, uh, 1000 Series this year has been very successful. Um, 29 Masters Series titles now, could be a record 30th. I know you've had a lot of statistics thrown at you, you know, with success comes that. But what would that mean to, if you were able to achieve that? Well, I, uh, you know what, I, I, um, I, I appreciate and respect every, every achievement, but, you know, I don't want to think too much in advance. For now, I just... Uh, you know, want to play uh, well, feel good on the court. I haven't haven't played for a couple of weeks. The ma uh, an official match, and it's it's the first hard court uh, tournament since uh, earlier this year. So I'm just going to focus on my uh, you know uh, improvement day in and day out, and see where it takes me. And mentioning that, you know, the transition to hard court. How's that going? You know, how's practice going? Um, it's a simple process. It's, it's yeah. I mean, it's 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 process like any other. You know, it hasn't uh, hasn't been the first time that I have to go through that process. And uh, you know, it takes it takes days. It takes weeks to to really get yourself 100% uh, shape uh, mentally, physically, and and feel well. Um, hitting the ball, getting the right strike zone, getting that comfort level and the positioning and all these things. You know, obviously I. I'm uh, going to have a couple of days of adaptation uh, to the time zone, to the conditions here in Toronto. They are not easy, so, you know, hopefully um, I'll, I'll be able to get the best out of myself throughout the week. I wonder if you could just have a little quick word about uh, Milos Ranić and, and his achievements um, this year and, and Wimbledon in particular and what he's doing for Canadian tennis. Uh, it's very good. I mean, he's, he's, he's a hard worker and it pays off for him. You know, I know Milos very well for, for, for some time and I've experienced firsthand his, uh, his evolution and, and improvement. <coughs> Obviously huge serve, one of the biggest that, that, that sport ever had. So with, with that weapon um, in his arsenal, he can, he can hurt anybody on any surface. And um, you know, he, he had a, an amazing run on, on the grass courts uh, this year, reaching his first Grand Slam finals. So I'm sure he's, he's very eager now to, to get back on the court, perform in his front, of, front of his home crowd and, and, and do well. I'm talking about big servers, but there's a few here this week. I think you know with John and, and with Evo, and, and you as one of the you know the great returners in the game. I wonder if I could ask you, you know, facing big servers like that, what what is what is the hardest thing, and what's the hardest thing when dealing with that? Well, as anticipation <laughs> of the of the where the serve is going to go. Obviously, <coughs> it's not easy reading um, reading the serve that comes your your way 220, 230 kilometers per hour, or even more. Um, you know, you, you kind of sometimes have to follow your instinct, your intuition, and sometimes about positioning, but sometimes about reading the pattern, and sometimes just pure luck. So uh, I mean, when you have the guy serving that way, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's crucial to use the opportunity when it's presented. Okay, cool. Just a couple of